hello friends welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will see the next part of second unit that is process scheduling under this uh, we are going to discuss the uh, cpu scheduling basic concepts so under this process scheduling we are going to concentrate only on the cpu scheduling here uh, we will see the cpu utilization cpu burst and io burst cycle cpu scheduler that is short term scheduler and cpu scheduling uh, in this CPU scheduling, we are going to see two different scheduling. First one is non preemptive scheduling and preemptive scheduling. Let us discuss all these things one by one. First, let us see the CPU utilization. When come to single processor system, only one process can run at a time because here we are having only one CPU that is CPU may be here. CPU, all the process will wait in the ready queue. Okay, the newly process will wait in the ready queue then the scheduler will dispatch the process to the cpu for running okay and all the process should wait until its turn should come to run on the cpu then the process will be rescheduled okay when come to multi programming some process will run always in the cpu okay hence we can maximize the CPU utilization. How? Because while running a particular process, it may require I.O. or for event wait, hence it will go back to waiting queue. It will go back to waiting queue until uh, it completes its I.O. request or the other event. Okay, sometimes an interrupt may occur to CPU then immediately the CPU will schedule for another process. Hence <coughs> the CPU scheduling is very important in designing the operating system. CPU bus and IO bus cycle. The process execution is the cycle of uh, CPU execution as well as IO wait. So th this is what we have seen in the previous diagram. The process execution begins with the CPU burst first. What is CPU burst? This is the time taken to complete this CPU execution is called a CPU burst and followed by an IO burst. What is IO burst? The time taken to complete the IO request is called as IO burst. Okay, which is again followed by CPU burst and another IO burst will come and so on. And finally, the CPU burst will end the system request to terminate the execution. See when come to this particular diagram, first the process will begin with CPU burst. CPU burst load, add, store and read from file. Read from file means this is IO, isn't it? Hence it will wait for IO to complete this particular reading operation. After that the CPU burst will start here. So store increment in index a write to file. So write to file means again the process will come to the IO burst isn't it so because file is io write for file after completing this write again the cpu will burst will uh, starts load store add store and read from file read from file means again that will come to io burst so the cycle will be repeated until the process should be executed completely the next one is CPU scheduler uh, which is otherwise called as short term scheduler. Whenever the CPU become idle, immediately the operating system should select any one of the process from the ready queue to be executed. Okay, This selection process is called as uh, carried out by the short term scheduler, the short term scheduler which is otherwise called as CPU scheduler. Here the ready queue can be implemented various scheduling algorithms. Okay, any of the scheduling algorithm may be the first come first serve queue, priority queue, tree or simply an unordered linked list. So all these things are very much helpful to select a particular process from the ready queue and that will be assigned to execute in CPU. Okay, these records in the queue are generally the process control block of processes. During the CPU scheduling, the decision may be taken under four uh, circumstances. The first one is when process switch from running state to waiting state. Running state to waiting state. That is 
if any io request occurs then the process will switching from running state to waiting state and the second one is the process switches from running state to ready state when during interrupt occurs when interrupt occurs then the current process will uh, switches from running state to ready state and in the third condition when process switching from waiting state to ready state waiting state to ready state when io complete io request complete then the process will move from waiting state to ready state and the last one is when process terminates when process terminates the process has to exit from the cpu isn't it so we have to take decision under this four circumstance in this first and fourth situation which is the first one the process which is from running to waiting state when i go request and fourth one is when process terminates we have no chance in terms of scheduling because the process should goes to waiting state if i go request comes if the execution completes then the program should be terminated isn't it so there is no chance of taking any other decisions the new process should come to the uh, cpu execution then this is called as non preemptive scheduling okay when come to the situation 2 and 3 which is to the process switches from running state to ready state when interrupt occurs and when process waiting uh, comes from waiting state to ready state okay in this situation these are called as preemptive scheduling let us see these two things Uh, in the forthcoming slides the first one is non preemptive scheduling non preemptive scheduling means once a process enter into running state once a process enter into running state it continues its execution until it terminates that is the process got completed or blocks by itself for waiting for input and output request okay so this is called as non preemptive scheduling because that means once the process enters into cpu the process will continue its uh, execution without any disturbance is called as non preemptive scheduling the opposite to non preemptive scheduling is preemptive scheduling here the currently running process may be interrupted and the running process will go back to ready state by the operating system okay see this is the ready queue here the process is waiting and when it turns comes it executes on the cpu cpu will execute this particular process then immediately some other process will come with highest priority hence this is called as interrupt when interrupt occurs this executing current process will be go back to ready queue again then the new process will be started executing in the cpu so this is called as preemptive scheduling up to this we have seen the process scheduling that is cpu scheduling basic concepts let us recall the points we have discussed first one is cpu utilization that is why the cpu utilization is important and the bust cycle of uh, uh, cpu and io and the scheduling that is cpu scheduler that is short term scheduler and cpu scheduling algorithms here we are having two different algorithms first one is non preemptive scheduling algorithm and second one is preemptive scheduling algorithm in the forthcoming slide we will see the different scheduling algorithms which are available in the cpu scheduling okay thank you